I'm going to tie a hare's ear jiggy, and I first came across this pattern in George Daniels' Dynamic Nymphing, and it's worked well for me, so I thought I'd tie it up for you today. I've got a size 12 jig hook in the vise with a 764 gold tungsten bead already on the hook shank. I'll add some additional weight to this with 8 to 10 wraps of wire. And I'll remove the tips of the lead and I'll seat the bead on the straight part of the hook shank and then push it into the bend. The thread that I'll use is an 8 aught black. I'll start this behind the lead and make sure that I've taken plenty of turns up through to make sure that it's locked in. And I'll advance my thread down to about the bend in the hook, maybe a little bit further, and I can tie in my tail. And for that, I'm going to use a guard hairs, and I'll do it from uh, a hide as opposed to the to the mask. And my only preference here is that I've got the material available to me. It uh, there's a lot of it on one hide, and it comes or the variations in the hide itself. There's a lot of different uh, color variations, so you can select some darker fibers, some uh, some lighter fibers, depending on what you want to match. I hold it at a 90 degree angle uh, from the hide when I when I trim it, so that the tips align. And I'll take more than what I anticipate using, and that's just so that when I start to clean out the the tips and the under fur I'll lose some of that volume and until I'm done grooming it'll be it'll be the appropriate size so once I'm happy with shape and volume then I'll tie it in and anytime I'm tying on a jig I make sure that I've covered both sides of the hook and I do that knowing that this will ride in the water opposite of the way that I'm that I'm tying it so it'll ride this way so I want to make sure that I've got material on all sides uh, and not just sitting on on top it'll have a rib and that's just a small gold wire I'll tie that into the side as well just behind the lead And for the body, I will use a hair's mask to get the, the dubbing material. So I'll start by waxing my thread. And then I'll trim from the mask to dub. This pattern has a hot spot as well as CDC uh, that I'll tie in. So I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough room behind the behind the bead there to accommodate for that. Then I'll wrap my rib through, nice even turns up through the body until I get to my thread, and then tie it off. For the hot spot, you can use whatever material you prefer. I think the natural, the uh, original pattern calls for a natural hair's ear in pink. I've gotten to really like some of these synthetic products, so I'm going to use uh, fluorescent pink for my hot spot.
and I'll put in a, a band here of that. And then the CDC that I'll use, uh, I'm going to use the type that has the stem in as opposed to the to the puffs, although I do like the puffs in, in certain patterns. This I'm going to wrap behind the bead. So I'll tie it in by the stem so that I've got good grip. The weakest part of this is at the at the tip and I'll still still need to be careful about that when I'm wrapping it because I'll attach my hackle pliers to it but at least in this case if the tip breaks off um, I'm still tied in and, and can salvage it so I'm trying to find the tip there and grasp enough of the enough of the stem and then I'll slick these fibers back towards the tail. And it'll only take a couple of wraps. And I'll remove the stem, and now I can hold all of that back and start to finish the fly there just behind the, the bead. Take my whip finish to it. And then if you pinch these together you get an idea for for length. And if you got some that are a little bit longer than the than the tail. I just kind of pinch and pull them, pinch and pull them off. And that is the hare's ear jiggy.